Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, or whatever time it may be in your part of the world. My name is Mr. John Wayne, and I am a variety gamer. I play everything from the Fallout franchise all the way to the Soulsborne series. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of my Elden Ring walkthrough. I hope you're all doing well. I know that I am, and today we're going to be making our way through the Caria Manor. But before we do, like always, let's go ahead and look at everything I did off screen. And really, I didn't do much. The only thing I made sure I had was some fire arrows. So if you don't have those, go ahead and go get some. We're going to be fighting some enemies here in this area that are very weak to fire. If you also want to and you don't want to deal with getting some fire arrows, you can always make some fire pots from the cracked pots or the ritual pots. All right, let's go ahead and start making our way through the Caria Manor. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna come off to the right and we're gonna meet our first hand enemy. They're super creepy. They remind me of the enemies in Zelda, Ocarina of Time, that drop down on you in the forest temple. We're going to come up these steps. Kill this Albanort here. Grab ourselves the Glintstone Craftsman's Cookbook 6. And then don't worry about that Albanort. There's one to the left here. And then one right here. Now right here, these little swords that are, or daggers, whatever you want to call them, they're traps. Very crappy traps. It's really hard to take damage from that. You'd have to stand there and just be like, huh, what is that? Right here, we're going to get ourselves a somber smithing stone three. Also, the reason I'm wearing heavy armor over here is because if the hand enemies, the big ones, hit me, my poise won't break. Oh, I should have used a fire arrow. Use a fire arrow on these small guys. One should kill them. And then we're going to land on this guy. He didn't stand a chance. I'm going to take out this guy over here. Be careful. They do have this, like, pink thing they can shoot at you. And that will, like, stop you from moving. It'll stagger you or whatever. So just be aware of that. Right here we have a blue scarab. We're gonna run off to the right of it so we can get it to run into the wall. Get ourselves the Carrion Piercer. Pretty cool spell for all you spellcasters out there. Get ourselves the Ice Crest Shield. And then we're gonna make our way up here. Now in the ground we have one of those big hand creatures. We're gonna wanna Spoil its ambush. You don't want to walk over that. It's going to grab you and like squeeze you a couple times. They do drop a lot of somber smithing stone twos in here. So if you're needing those, you're going to come out with a ton of them after coming through here. See how he's hitting me and my poise isn't breaking? It's because I'm wearing heavy armor. 
right over here this door it is locked we're gonna be opening up opening it up here soon first we want to take out these small little hands or hand guys I don't know what to call them I like to call them creepy things from Zelda the Ocarina of Time. Okay, so we got one over there and then one up here. We want to get the attention of this one over here. And we want to back up. I want to see if I can't get him to use his pink thing. So whenever he does that or whatever it is, does that, you do not want it to grab you. Because it's going to prevent you from moving. It's almost like a grapple. Take that one out over there. Thought there was one more. Guess not. And then right there is the entrance, so we just did a big circle. And I forgot to pick up this item that the other hand dropped. Now, there is a few items up top there, but they're just crafting material. And I, I honestly don't feel like it's worth it just for some glintstone fireflies and stuff like that it just to me isn't worth it so i'm not going to go up to the left here we're just going to continue forward take that guy out that guy over there there's another one right over here hiding in the ground take that one out too there's just a ton of those big hand dudes over here. And I'm just not willing to fight them. See, you can see over there, there's another item. It's some crafting material. Feel free to run over there and grab it if you want. I'm not going to bother with it. Almost forgot about this guy. Pull our bow back out. Got another guy right here. Be really careful. We do have a big one up top. What I like to do so the other guys don't get involved is I will shoot them with a fire arrow to kill them. And then I will crouch. This, this item is going to get me caught. Nope. Nope. It didn't get me caught. I thought it was going to. But just come up and around, kind of hug the wall. You can get up behind him. Switch to your sword. Just take him out really easily. Did they drop anything? They did not. So that wasn't too bad. Coming through here the first time I played this game was a nightmare. Absolutely terrifying. The carrier manor is pretty creepy in my opinion. Right here we're going to get a somber, or not somber, but a smithing stone for. We're going to light this grace. And then out here, we're going to run straight through here there's going to be a ton of enemies that spawn in if you want to fight them feel free i am not going to fight them i'm just going to run straight through we're going to cut to the left and then we're going to cut to the right and then behind this tower we're going to have an item i'm going to pick that item up just a rune arc but they come in handy 
And then we're going to roll off. You can run and jump off. I was being a little brave there. Probably should run and jump, but you can roll off here and be just fine. This is connected. Right here, we're going to go down this ladder. And then we're going to open up this chest and get a really, really good weapon. It's the Sword of Night and Flame. Now, it used to be really strong, but apparently it got nerfed quite a bit, so it's not as strong as what, what it used to be, but it is still a really powerful sword. If you're looking for a sword that's got some fire damage on it and does a lot of damage in general, that's the sword for you. Right here is the door that I was talking about earlier that we we're going to unlock. This is that door. Let's go ahead and fast travel over to the manor lower level. Now again, what we're going to do is we're going to run straight through all of this nonsense. Do not even worry about fighting anything unless you absolutely want to. In my opinion, it's not worth it. The amount of runes that you're going to get for it is not anything to write home about. Just kind of dodge, bob and weave. And then we're going to run straight up to this elevator. Take it on up. And then we see a grace right here. The only reason we're coming to get this grace is because where we're about to go, we don't want to have to run through a bunch of enemies or back through a bunch of enemies. So then we'll be able to fast travel back. So just sit at the grace to despawn all those enemies. And then we're going to run down these stairs. Don't go too far or else you're going to respawn those enemies. We're going to jump off right about here. Now you can drop down. There's a little spot you can fall down to. But I've never been able to make that jump from falling right there. What I like to do is get a running start and just jump across. If you feel like you can make that jump from that ledge over there to here, feel free. But I have never been able to make it. Grab some rim crystal bud and then over here if we go underneath these stairs, we can go ahead and get a golden rune 3. We're going to run over here. We'll pull out our bow. Make use of our fire arrows. Grab this. This is a really cool whip. If you're into whips, this is a cool one. I've never used it. But uh, some of my friends have in PvP. Over here is a um, Iron Virgin. You don't have to fight it. You can run right by it. I'm going to fight it. Um, just because. Wanted to do her grab attack. So if you don't want to fight her, just run right past her, cross the uh, little scaffolding right here, and jump down. The only reason we're coming over here is for a somber smithing stone 3. So if you don't care about the somber smithing stone 3, you don't even have to come over here. We're going to fast travel over to the manor upper level.
go ahead and activate that summoning pool and then take that wolf out I was gonna try to loot it but it fell off here get a lump of flesh now you don't have to fight the wolf over there which we're not going to you can grab this golden seed without aggroing it but there is going to be a wolf over here that no matter what we do is going to aggro towards us and that's because we want the item that's over here Get a rimmed crystal bud. Let's switch back to our bow. You see a big giant over there? Or troll. We're just going to lure these guys out one by one. Sometimes they like to uh, strafe back and forth or just stop and de-aggro. I don't know why. Guess they get confused. Okay, now normally a lot of people would run in and fight that troll. We're not going to. We're going to veer off to the left here. Jump across. Climb this ladder. Take out that poor enemy. Get a glintstone staff. We already have one of those. We can sell that. Get some magic grease. And then run up these stairs. And we have another enemy just chilling out here. And then what we can do is hop down on this troll. Get a charged R2. Do another charged R2, get him to fall down, and then take him out. Pretty easy. And we get the Troll Knight Sword. Now, I don't know if this Troll Knight Sword is random or not. I have gotten it every time that I've killed this troll. So, if you don't get it, I apologize, but it may or may not be random. Even if you don't get it, it's not the greatest strength weapon in the world. It is a colossal greatsword, but it's not that great. It's okay. It's mid. Get ourselves a smithing stone four. And then we can hop down here. And do not go up the left side. We're actually going to come up the right side and take care of the enemy on the right. The enemy on the left won't aggro, as long as we stay on this side at least. These guys are pretty easy, shouldn't struggle with them. And then we're going to crouch, and we're going to get behind this ambush. This is why you want to go up the right side instead of the left side. If you went towards the left, you're going to have an ambush. It's really not going to be that fun. Nice. We got the page guard. And some perfumer bolts. Get the rimmed crystal bud. And then we're going to come over here. And we're going to grab ourselves a golden rune four. We're going to go into the boss room first. But before we do, I just want to show everybody there is a spot that we can hop down to and get some items. But what we want to do is fight the boss first. That way we have a grace to fast travel back to. 
Let's go ahead and drink our flask of wondrous physic. And then we're going to be pulling out Oleg. Our MVP, Mr. Oleg. This is a pretty easy boss. You shouldn't struggle too hard with Loretta. It's not even the real Loretta. We'll meet the actual Loretta much, much later into the game. There we go. And for killing Loretta, we get Loretta's Great Bow. Really cool spell. I really enjoy this spell anytime I'm playing any kind of spell caster. And we also get the Ash of War, Loretta Slash. Really cool Ash of War for spell casters that are using like a twin blade or a pole arm or anything like that. Put that on. Super cool. Let's go ahead and light this grace. Also, those arrows that were shooting at us on the way up, they will no longer shoot down at us because we have killed Loretta. For now, what we're going to do is come over here to the spot I was talking about just a minute ago. We're going to get a running start and jump. And then on this one, we do not want to run and jump. I have ran and jumped. And when I have, I have... Oh my goodness, that scared me. I thought I was almost going to die. Um, that roll was a little off, but I have run and jumped straight off this. Just completely missed this scaffolding. This one, we do want to run and jump. And then we're going to pull out our bow and take this guy out. Be a little bit lazy and kill the Kool-Aid man from a distance. I don't know about anybody else, but those guys always remind me of the Kool-Aid guy. Especially when they do their spin to win. Get ourselves a cracked pot. And then we're going to kill the small little pot boys. Get a living jar shard and some raw meat dumplings. Or a raw meat dumpling. A lot of the stuff that I'm getting will come in handy a lot later into the game. When you're going to be using some buffs. For now, it's like pretty easy. Shouldn't have too much trouble with the stuff that we're going through. Besides Kaled. Kaled is just... Ugh. A nightmare so we're gonna come over here for some reason I thought we had to hop down over there don't hop down over there that will be your death and then we're gonna pull our bow out again and kill another kool-aid guy from a distance He will start running at us here in just a moment, or at least should. Anytime I say something, they they definitely do the opposite. I swear they can hear me. So we got a second one off in the distance here. This is why we killed the other guy first. That way we weren't fighting two of them at the same time. That is definitely no bueno. Go ahead and grab some living jar shards and raw meat dumplings. Over here is a smithing stone three. Making sure I didn't miss an item. 
We're going to hop down right here. And then over here. I'm just going to roll off. And then grab ourselves the Ash of War Carrion Grandeur. This is a really cool Ash of War. It pulls out a huge colossal great sword, uh, like a glint, glint blade uh, great sword. Pretty cool. If you're a spellcaster, it definitely comes in handy. For now, we're going to fast travel to the Royal Moon Gazing Grounds. Let's go ahead and turn our lantern on. We're going to walk straight. Behind us is where we entered to fight Loretta. If we veer off to the right here, there's another exit. Let's go into our map. What we're going to do is we're going straight over here. But we want to hug. Oh, poor deer. He should not have been there. Um, we're going to hug the wall. And the reason why is because there is a dragon over here. You can kind of make it out. But once I get into a clearing, I'll show everybody a little better. So there's a dragon over there. We do not want to aggro that dragon just yet. In the next video, we will fight that dragon. But for now, we're just going to leave it be. Live and let live. Until we don't let it live. Which is in the next video. We're just going to hop down here. We're going to be finishing up the Carrion Manor so we don't have to come over here later. Which, honestly, much, much later into the game, we are going to come over here. But for now, we're finished once we uh, get through this. Before we head down that ladder, we're going to come over here. Grab ourselves some old fang. Slide down the ladder. And then we're going to talk to Pitya. Oh, you? I am uh, sorry, your worship. I apologize for any offense given. I am Pidya, servant to the Karian royal family. I am charged with maintaining these ghastly dolls. Ah, your worship, allow me to be of use. Other than the puppets, there are some very fine things up here in this storeroom. Why not pick something out before you go? But please, can you offer poor ill starred Pitya a little something by way of compensation? So there's quite a few things we can buy from Pitya. I don't know how many ruins everybody has. But some of the most important things to buy is number one, anytime you see a craftsman's cookbook, you want to pick that up. A ritual pot is going to be um, good to pick up. Celestial do, maybe, maybe not, uh, depending on if you're accidentally hitting um, NPCs or not, is going to determine if you're really going to need a celestial do or not. Um, and then larval tears definitely recommend grabbing that up and then this weathered map get this weathered map you're gonna want it and then lastly the most important thing to pick up at least in my opinion is the ash of war carrion retaliation what this allows you to do is parry spells and when you parry them you're gonna get three glintstone knives above your head and they'll shoot at an enemy Super cool. You can put it on any shield uh, for the most part, that is. And I'm definitely going to put it on my shield. And then we're just going to buy up everything else. He's going to have some dialogue for buying everything from him. If you don't have enough, that's okay. Not a big deal. Not like you're losing out on anything major. 
Uh, I'm sorry, Your Worship. But poor Pindia has given all he has. I can't be of further use to you. Please forgive me. We're going to leave uh, Pidia alone. We'll see him again much later into the game. But for now, we're just going to leave him be. And what we're going to do is we're going to fast travel to the Royal Moon Gazing Grounds. And then we're going to end the video. I'll see everybody over there. Alrighty, everyone. I want to start by telling you all thank you so very much for stopping by and watching the video. It really does mean a lot to me. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down button. Let me know why down in the comments below. It only helps the channel. Also, if you enjoy content just like this, be sure to subscribe or don't. I don't know. I'm not your dad. Do whatever you want. And like always, everybody, have a good morning, a good afternoon, or good night. Whatever time it may be in your part of the world, Mr. John Wayne, signing off.